Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I'm excited to review Gaziano and Gerling's new collection of classics. Now, we all know Gaziano and Gerling for their exceptional $1,200 dress shoes. There's no question that whenever it comes to proper English-made dress shoes, there are few finer shoes than what is coming out of the Gaziano and Gerling factory. But what about their new classics range at almost half the cost? The burning question is, are they worth it? There's no question that a pair of shoes from Gatiano and Gerling are beautiful masterpieces, but they can set you back over $1,200. Uh, Gatiano and Gerling's new classics range, on the other hand, average $800 for a shoe made in the same factory. In today's video, I'm gonna take a look at their collection, which I have today, and go over each shoe one by one and talk about what makes these shoes exceptional. Now, whenever it comes to classic English-made shoes, there are a lot of options out there, but I've always been a proponent of working or at least purchasing shoes from those heritage manufacturers that are actually making the shoes that they're selling you. They're not simply buying shoes from another factory and putting their name on it. And with that, you can purchase with the confidence that you're actually buying something of value where the price is substantiated by the quality. Now, Gatione and Gerling's new classics range drops the price point down from $1,200 to $800 and the shoes are made in the same factory. So let's talk about the quality that goes into these shoes and how they're different from Gaziano and Gerling's standard range of shoes. Now the classics really was uh, Gaziano's attempt to really offer kind of those everyday staples, those shoes that really everyone needs in their wardrobes to their customers at a lower price point. Let's be honest, $1,200 is an exceptional amount of money to spend on a pair of shoes, and there's just fewer people out there spending that much money than can even afford to spend $800, which alone is still a lot of money for a pair of shoes. But I've always said that $600 to $800 is really that threshold that you need to be spending at in order to really get a shoe that is a really high quality, factory-made Goodyear welted shoe, and these classics don't disappoint. So you're gonna ask, well, they're made in the same factory, how are they different? Well, that is in the details here, and I have to say it's really kind of subtle and difficult to pick up. So first, let's take a look at these. So I'm gonna take this beautiful semi-brogue right here. If we look at this, uh, this shoe is really indistinguishable from some of the best factory-made shoes to come out of, of England. Now, is it uh, on the same level as one of the Gaziano and Gerling's kind of high-end ranges? Uh, it's not, but the details are really subtle and probably not important to most people that just want a good pair of shoes. So what are the differences? Well, first, let me tell you what's not different. First, this is made in the same factory using the same equipment and the same craftspeople as Gatione and Gerling's high-end range. So the workmanship on this shoe really is just on par with a standard pair of Gatione and Gerling shoes. It's made with the same leather, using the same materials, even the oak bark tanned leather outsoles that of course you want in a really high quality leather pair of shoes because it's gonna make the shoes last so much longer. The heel stack is still 100% oak bark uh, tanned leather. Uh, and you know, all of the stitching and stitch intensity uh, is really uh, almost exactly the same. Same shoelaces, same lining, uh, same quality materials, same machines, same people. The question is, is what's different? Well, the difference is really subtle and it comes down to just really the lasting and the work that goes into the waist. Now, one of the most distinguishable characteristics of a really high quality pair of Gatiano and Gerling shoes, of course, was their bottom. The beautiful kind of bottom uh, treatment that they did, the fiddle-backed waist, the slightly taller heel stack that's uh, pitched just a little bit to add a touch of extra elegance to the shoe. Uh, all that work really created a significant amount of additional work uh, in the actual making of the shoe. This is as good of a shoe of any, uh, and to say that this is somehow less uh, really is to totally misrepresent this classics range because really uh, this is the standard and it is a high standard. Uh, and then all the fiddle-backed wasting, you know, the painted outsoles, uh, the a slightly pitched heel stack, I mean, that is like over, over, and over above. So this is an absolutely beautiful pair of shoes uh, and really is made of the highest quality. Whenever I turn the shoe over and look at the outsole, it's absolutely beautifully finished. Uh, certainly uh, much significantly better than the majority of all factory-made shoes out there. Uh, and it's hard to think of why you would want anything more than this. Now, another characteristic that I like that they've retained is they still have the invisible channel stitching, you know, right here, so you're not seeing uh, that Goodyear welt. 
you've got a little bit of nailing detail on the heel, uh, but otherwise, uh, this is just a really perfectly executed British shoe at the highest level. Another difference with the Classics range uh, is that it's really a stock range of shoes. One of the other benefits of Gatian and Girlings is one, they have a huge range of shoes, most of which are made to order, uh, and they have an incredible patina service where you can have any of their shoes finished in any number of uh, patinas. With the Classics range, they're keeping it relatively simple. Uh, there are, are really just uh, the black calf, uh, which is a uh, just a, a factory dyed leather uh, that's done at the tannery. As far as available finishes for the Classics, that's really uh, been kept simple in order to keep the prices down. Uh, most shoes are available in two different finishes, uh, either a black calf or some type of antique or marbled brown. And then we have these suede, uh, and even these shoes right here are available in two different options. So the Gatiano and Girlings Classic range uh, really is their attempt to constrain themselves to a real stock program of shoes. These are available in stock uh, in sizes 6 to 12, only in these finishes. They can't be uh, made to order in any special finishes or patinas. But what does that allow you? It allows you to access a pair of Gatiano and Girling shoes for as little as $800, which as much as that is, I have to tell you, is a steal relative to the quality. So next, let's review the specific models that are available in the Classics range. Now these four right here are each available in two finishes, so that's eight models. And then this Wallace Chuck-a-Boot at the end is available in one finish, making for a total of nine models that comprise the Classics range. Now first up is a shoe that of course uh, you could imagine is uh, dear to my heart. Uh, it's a simple Churchill. This is what they call their Churchill. Uh, what is it? Uh, it is a black cap toe Oxford with a little bit of broguing across the toe cap. This is an absolutely beautifully executed shoe. And I have to say, I almost like this more than their standard Sinatra shoe, which is their black cap toe Oxford, because it has a little bit more detailing work kind of in the actual pattern working here. And I'll point that out to you. So this Churchill is only available in black, but it's available in two different lasts, which is actually a very interesting approach to a shoe like this. First it is available in a round toe, which is the R18. I have this here but it's also available in an S45, which is a square toe. You see that reflected here in the double bunk. So simple shoe, it's a classic. This should be a staple of any man's wardrobe, but we all have our different preference of round toe versus slightly square toe. So here in the classics range, you can have uh, either of those or you could have both. So again, let's look at this shoe right here. A beautiful proportion that you would expect from any shoe to come out of Gatian and Girling. Of course, Tony is exceptionally well known uh, for his uh, skill as a designer, and he's making absolutely beautiful shoes. And you can see that this cap really has great proportion in it relative to the overall size of the shoe. It's got a beautiful kind of single row of stitching right here, some punching across the cap of the toe or some broguing. Uh, and then it's uh, got pinking, which is the small triangulation and dentions uh, at the edge of the pattern and then another very neat, very, um, very uh, well done single row of stitching. Uh, here, kind of across the vamp, again, another detail. Two rows of stitching gives a little bit of visual separation between this pattern piece to the next. Uh, and then you just have a very simple kind of arc along the facing of the shoes uh, that is, again, just a single row of stitching. Now, whenever you look at this stitching, look at how fine the stitch density is how perfectly executed and parallel all the stitches are. Again, the workmanship here is the same quality that we've come to expect from Gaziano and Girling. Turning around the shoe, again, beautifully shaped heel. Uh, it has a seam in the back. It's got a nice standard heel block. Now, is it as sexy as the heel block on Gaziano and Girling's standard range of shoes? Not quite, uh, but not everyone is in to that slightly taller, slightly pitched heel. So here we have what is a beautifully executed kind of standard British heel block. It's got relatively square, but it certainly follows the line of the shoe. And an important detail here is that this heel block sits very neatly underneath the heel. It's not protruding off the back. Uh, it's very well done. Following the shoe around, we've got great kind of last shape here. Uh, you can see that it's got dimension here, three dimensionality to the shape of the shoe. It means that it's very well lasted. And then looking at the outsole, uh, the stitch density of the outsole where it's sewn onto the welt uh, is done very well. The same stitch density that you would find on a standard Gatsano and Girling shoe. 
So again, this Churchill is beautifully done. Uh, and you know, I have to say, uh, if I was just getting in uh, to building my shoe wardrobe, uh, this is probably exactly where I would go. Uh, $800, you're really not gonna find a better value out there than what you get in these classics range. Now you're a little limited in terms of the selection, uh, but with that, you're getting a really fantastically made shoe. Up next, we have another beautiful shoe. It's hard to say which I enjoy more between these two. I, I would probably go for both. Uh, and this is the Batter. Now this is a semi-brogue, slightly more decorative, less formal than this shoe, although traditional kind of American business culture uh, would associate all this broguing uh, on the toe cap and around the shoe as actually making it more formal but technically that's not the case. Uh, but this is beautifully executed. Again, look at the proportions of the cap. We've got this slightly chiseled kind of square toe here. Again, it's stylish. Uh, it's a little bit fashion forward. It's an updated version of this right here if you don't wanna appear so conservative. Uh, the broguing is done beautifully. I love the medallion design. Again, you have the broguing across the toe cap right here. You've got the pinking. Uh, and again, I love the broguing across this vamp right here, uh, up the facing and around the corner of the shoe, kind of around the top line. Beautifully done, perfectly executed, uh, and there's just really nothing that you would be wanting here. Going around to the back of the shoe and looking at the heel block, you can see that this is, again, perfectly executed. The heel block, which is an oak bark tanned uh, leather heel block, it's not particle leather, sits very neatly underneath the back of the shoe. Uh, it has a top lift right here, and it's a beautiful heel. I mean, it's perfectly done. Uh, and again, beautiful shape, great heel shape. It's not gonna slip. Absolutely beautiful shoe. For $800, again, this would be a shoe I would go out and buy tomorrow if I didn't already have it in my wardrobe. This batter is available in two different finishes. You have it in this black calfskin, but also a cognac marbled calfskin that has a little bit of antiquing and some more color to it would be in the brown family. So again, this shoe, beautiful absolutely beautiful in both finishes. Up next, we have a double monk, the Bletchley. Now, I'm personally not a huge fan of double monks, but there are unquestionably a ton of devotees out there that love their double monk straps. Now again, perfectly executed. Here it's shown uh, in that slightly square toe, beautifully polished, great detail work here. Again, same quality hardware that is used on Gatsyon and Girling's standard uh, range. I mean, there are really no corners uh, cut here that compromise the overall quality of the shoe. Uh, and just beautiful lines. I mean, look at how this is executed right here. You've got a little bit of reinforced stitching. The stitch density is very high. A beautiful heel block. Again, great shape here. Uh, and this is just an absolutely beautiful shoe. Beautiful outsole. I mean, this shoe right here uh, really is incredible. And now that I think about it, really this is kind of the uh, standard um, quality that you would find with Ralph Lauren Purple Label. Uh, whenever I see their shoes, uh, this is kind of really what I think. And at Ralph Lauren, uh, this shoe would cost $1,600. The Bletchy is available in black as shown here, and also a Parisian brown uh, with a little bit of marbling in it that gives, uh, again, that antiqued kind of patinaed look to the shoe. Now, again, one note is that unlike uh, Gaziano's standard range, where all the patinas are done by hand on crust leather in the factory, again, Gaziano is so well known for their finishing, they're famous for it. Uh, here, uh, all of the leathers are being uh, really tanned and dyed at the tannery uh, in black or in these uh, marbled leathers that again brings down that cost. So it's just an easy way to bring down the cost of the shoe without compromising any of the quality. Up next, we have a beautiful suede penny loafer. This is the Chadwick. Now this has the vamp, the hand-sewn vamp right here. Beautiful kind of round toe. Very high quality suede. I mean, you can really feel the quality of suede here. Again, the same materials that you would find in Gaziano's standard range. Uh, and it's just a beautiful shoe. I mean, I love the detail right here uh, with uh, the calfskin or maybe even the Napa kind of leather a binding right here that goes around the top. Again, it gives a little bit of contrast to the suede uh, and again, helps kind of informalize this shoe because of course a penny loafer is quite a casual shoe. A beautiful heel block seated well underneath the heel uh, and just great shape. I mean, this is an absolutely beautiful shoe, high stitch density, um, beautiful bottom finishing. Uh, again, I mean, this is a shoe that anyone should be exceptionally proud to own. It's shown here in brown mole suede, but this shoe is also available in a brown polo suede, uh, which is this color we have right here in this Wallace um, checker boot. 
So this beautiful checkout boot right here is the Wallace. Uh, it's shown in the Polo suede. It clocks in a little bit higher than $800. This uh, comes in at $915 uh, because there's a little bit more work and material involved in a chukka boot. But again, absolutely beautiful shoe, a beautiful kind of smart round toe, uh, absolutely exceptional quality to the suede. Uh, again, this comes with a rubber sole. So if someone's asking for like a good inclement weather shoe, this shoe would really be exceptional. With a little bit of Saphir Super Invulner, you could waterproof that suede. This would be an exceptional shoe for traveling or kind of walking around outside where you don't really have confidence uh, in the weather itself. Again, all the stitch density, everything else about the make of the shoe is exactly what you would expect from Gaziano and Girling. Beautiful heel block. I mean, certainly a more rugged uh, heel block than you see in these dress shoes. You know, but just look at the depth of the rubber right here. I mean, it's really actually a feature of quality right here. It's just how substantial this is. Still has an oak bark tanned leather uh, heel block here, at least in these layers. Uh, and it's just perfectly executed uh, on this shoe. Goodyear welted can still be uh, replaced uh, easily through a program like our Kirby Allison Certified Shoe Restoration Program. Uh, and again, um, you know, one of the things that I love about all of Gatian and Girling's shoes is just the beautiful aesthetic. Uh, and you see that right here uh, in uh, this collection. So here we are, Gatian and Girling's classic range, absolutely fantastic collection of shoes that really form the foundation of any well-dressed man's wardrobe. And if you're looking to invest in a high quality Goodyear welted uh, English dress shoe, uh, you really should, uh, need not look any further than the classics by Gatian and Girling. At $800, the answer is unequivocally yes, they're absolutely worth the money. All of these Gatian and Girling shoes, of course, can be purchased on their website, shipped all over the world. Uh, the charge is in British pounds, so there's a little bit of a conversion uh, you know, factor there. But generally, at the time of filming this video, uh, these shoes right here were retailing for around $800, uh, and this Wallace right here at $915. The Classics Collection is also available with shoe trees for a small additional cost. Let me know what you think of these classics in the comments below, and if you were to only acquire one of these shoes, which would be the one you would acquire. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out our factory tour from the Gatiano and Girling factory. We traveled with our crew there and got the grand tour. You can see exactly how these shoes are made in their renowned factory. Of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching.